Hi, this is Munson from Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play an old song by Roy Orbison called Only the Lonely. And it starts on an F major chord. And when you play F major, first finger is going to go across the entire first fret. Second finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret. Third finger is going to go to the A string on the third fret. And the pinky is going to go to the D string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that makes an F major chord that sounds really, really happy. Now, a lot of times, if you're just starting out, though, a good substitute for that chord is F major 7. The way you play F major 7, first finger is going to go to the B on the first fret, second finger is going to go to the G on the second fret, and third finger is going to go to the D string on the third fret. And if you strum just the top four strings, that sounds like F major 7, and that sounds really, really happy. So that can be a good substitute for that chord. But for this video, I'm just going to use the F major as a bar chord, just because it sounds really, really happy that way. So we start on an F major, and then from F major, we're going to be going to a G minor chord. And the way you play G minor, First finger is going to move as a bar to the third fret, and then the third finger is going to stay on the A string on the fifth fret, and the pinky is going to go to the D string on the fifth fret. So the second finger is going to kind of not be part of that chord, and that's called a G minor, and it sounds really, really sad. And then from G minor, we're going to be going to a B flat major. And the way you play B flat major, first finger is going to go back to the bar on the first fret, and then you, you could take second finger and go D string on the third fret, third finger on the G string on the third fret, pinky on the B string on the third fret, and if you strum all those together, that makes a B flat major and it sounds really, really happy. Now another way to do that though is to kind of keep the bar on the first fret and take the third finger and go over the D, G, and B strings to kind of get that sound. So you may want to experiment with that with like the double bar. And then from B flat major, we're going to be going to a C major chord, and when you play C major, first finger is going to go to the B string on the first fret, second finger is going to go to the D on the second fret, and the third finger is going to go to the A string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that makes a C major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then from C major, we're going to be going back to F major. And then another C major. And then back to F major. So a lot of times with a song like this, to make it more interesting, I like adding what I call strum pattern to it. And one of my favorite 4-4 four -four strum patterns is a down, down, up, up, down, up. So we tried that through, through our intro, which is kind of a half chorus at the very, very beginning. Well, we'd have our F major with a down, down, up, up, down, F major, down, down, up, up, down, up, and then G minor, down, down, up, up, down, G minor, down, down, up, up, down, B flat major, down, down, up, up, down, C major, down, down, up, up, down, up, up down, down, up, up, down, C, down, down, up, up, down, down on the F, and then we're going to kind of kill it. Now, what, one thing you may want to do if, if that strum pattern is not, not, if you're not used to that, you may just want to take the F and just do that a lot, just that down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, but then a lot of our, 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 the rest of the song is kind of working around a lot of those same chords. So after our half chorus for the intro, then we're going to be going to our verse, which is basically the same chords. We're just going to be mixing them up different ways. So we're just going to try the verse with, with the strum pattern. We'd have the F major, down, up, up, down, F major, down, down, up, up, down, up, F, down, down, up, up, down, up. Then we go to G minor, down, down, up, up, down, G minor, down, down, up, up, down, up. Then we go to C major, down, down, up, up, down, up, C major, down. and does a cool thing where he kind of halves the measure. So we just do a down, down, up on the last C there. Down, down, up. And then we go to B flat major with the whole strum pattern. B flat, down, up, up, down, up. And then we go back to F major. F down, down, up, up, down, F down, down, up, up, down, up. And then we do a big F and kind of kill the sound of the string. So we go F with a down and kind of kill it. And then there's some really cool hits right after that. There's like a little bit of a verse. And then we're going to do four hits on the F. So we go F, 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 F. And then or Orbison goes to an F7 chord. And actually from the F major bar, all you really have to do is lift off the pinky. And that's called an F7. But just to walk through the whole chord, you have first finger across the entire first fret, second finger on the G on the second fret, and third finger on the A string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that makes an F7 chord. And it sounds a little messed up, and it's kind of supposed to. And then we do our hits on the F7. So we go one, two, three, one, just all down strings. So we got down, 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 down. 
and then we're gonna go to B flat and do that same thing. So I'm gonna go B flat down, 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 down. And then he goes to a G major chord, and Roy Orbison actually does this as a bar chord, where you would go third fret, uh, same as the G minor, and the third finger is going to still be on the A on the 5th fret, pinky on the D on, on the 5th fret, but then the 2nd finger is going to go to the G string on, on, on the 4th fret. And then we do 3 hits on the G, and then we go to a C major and do it down. So we're going to go G, 2, 3, and then C major. It's kind of a hit theme. So just to go through that whole part, that is, that, that it's kind of a, a, I guess it's a pre-chorus, like at the very end with the hits. You'd have F major, F7, B flat major, G major, C major, and then we're kind of into our full chorus, and, and this is a lot of the same chords, just mixing them up. So we got F major down, down, up, up, down, up. F major down, down, up, up, down. We'll go B flat down, up, up, down, C major down. Again. So then we got our G F down down up up down up F down down up up down up, F down down up up down G minor down down up up down G minor down down up up down C down down up up down C down down up up down we would have to see down down B flat down down up up down up F down down up up down up F down down up up down up F down and then we do our hits again, so we got the F down, 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 F7, down, 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 B flat, down, 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 G down, 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 C. And then at the very end we kind of have a tag on our B flat, down, down. And then there's a really cool lick at the end that, that you could play in, in, in tab. We have third fret on the D, and then open G, and then second fret on the G, and then we go to A string on the third fret and do that three times, or actually four times. So we got third fret, open two, three, 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 three. Now what Roy Orbison does though is he kind of backs that up with chords. So, so he kind of plays the F major, and then instead of playing an open G string, he plays a G minor chord. And instead of playing an A note, which is the second fret on the G, he plays an A minor chord, which if you took the G minor shape we've been doing and slide it to fifth fret. So you got a bar on fifth fret, third finger on the A string on the fifth fret, or seventh fret, pinky on the D string on the seven. All together, that makes an A minor chord. And then he kind of goes to the C major chord ends on the F major. So he kind of backs that up with chords where he's going F, G minor, A minor, C, two, three, F. So we got F, G minor, A minor, C, 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 F. But you could play just that lick where you got the three, O, oh, two, three, 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 and I would play a big F at the end. Just to kind of, to kind of try that. So that's how you would play Only the Lonely in the original key or, along with Roy Orbison. However, what Roy Orbison likes to do, and this reminds me so much of Tal Farlow, who was a very famous jazz guitar player, but he learned to, learn to play baritone ukulele first. And baritone ukulele is actually tuned exactly the same as guitar, but it's only got four strings. So you got E, B, G, and D. And so what Tal Farlow did, and Roy Orbison looks like he kind of took the same idea, is a lot of the chords that we're doing, where we're doing the bar F, Roy Orbison in the recording is kind of doing the bar over the top two strings, and then the second finger on the G, third finger on the D, but then he's taking the thumb, like an old blues technique, to go over the top of the guitar to get his bass note. So that might be something you want to play around with, is doing thumb basses, you know, to kind of get the F major. But I, I think it's easier to get a clearer sound doing the full bar all the way across. 
But I, just watching recordings of Roy playing it, he kind of does that. But that might be something you want to play around with, too, with this song. But that's the basis of how you play Only the Lonely by Roy Orbison. So, good luck!